Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have our special guest today. And he is a coach, a speaker, and he is a fitness expert. And it's Scott Friedman. He has his own podcast on our show. He is one of our podcast teammate, uh, team um, community community people. And he is here today to tell you about an amazing topic. So take it away, Scott. All right. Well, thank you so much. I think this is our third time together or something like that. So people should definitely watch the other episodes as well. Just you know, yes. click you know, mild thing there. Uh, no, today, I mean, basically developing and pushing through negative mindsets. So, you know, how do you get through when you're negative self-talk, when you're just, you don't, you don't want to do something, you're not confident with yourself. How do you develop a positive mindset or how do you develop this, the will to keep pushing forward? Because we've all had those days. We've all had those times where the alarm goes off and you know you need to work out or you know you need to meal prep or you know you have to do whatever and you don't want to do it and you create this negative cycle. And today I, I want to kind of share my four major tips that I would try to give someone to overcome this and kind of push forward through it. I think that's amazing, you know, because so many people have self-doubt and so many people, um, I think, hold them back. That self-doubt, that um, that that lack of confidence uh, really pulls people from really maintaining their goals. Now, when, you know, what are some of the things that you suggest to help people along the way? So I'm a little not traditional with this. I'm very, I don't know if the word pragmatic is like the right word to use because I've gone through a couple different iterations of this myself. So, you know, obviously this is just tools to use in your toolbox. Some of this will resonate. Some of it won't. My way is not the perfect way to do it. So I, I'll raise my hand. Like if it's, it's not for you, it's not for you, but maybe it is for you. Maybe one of these things can help you push forward because I have been there where I don't want to get up in the morning to you know, wake up at 4.30, go to the gym because I ha I can't go later or go after work after an eight, 10 hour day. There's, you have no energy and it's just negative or I skipped a day and now oh, I'm just, I'm so angry at myself. And just that cycle is so easily, it easily happens to us. And it's hard to break because once you're in it, your body's like, oh, okay, you're not going to keep moving because the body works against you. Generally speaking, the body is designed to keep us alive. It's not designed for change. It's designed to stay comfortable. And when you're on a weight loss journey, when you're trying to eat healthier and live a better life, that's change. And yeah. therefore, regardless of actually getting healthier, sometimes the body will say, we're not doing that. And it will send signals to you, whether it's hormonal, whether it's general thoughts, whatever it might be to say, Hey, stop this because in the morning and everyone just quick self test, right? I'll get to, I'll get to some of the topics. Quick self test in the morning when you wake up, like if you're feeling good, it's like, oh, I can't wait to go work out after work today. You had that mental, I had it today. And then after work, like right when you're leaving, you're like, there is nothing. I do not want to do anything. I don't want to work out. I don't want, I want to go home. I want to sit on the couch. I want to watch NCIS. You know, I want to watch Real Housewives, whatever it is. And I don't want to move. That is so common amongst everyone, I feel like, at least in my world. Yes. And what changed? The only thing changed is kind of what you were talking about throughout the day, the stresses of your life and how to kind of overcome those along the way. So that's kind of how I'm going to shape this because a lot of people talk about have a positive mindset, be positive. And you know what? I'll be honest. It hasn't really worked for me. You right. know, I'm, I think number one, we are naturally negative creatures towards ourselves because like, for example, if your friend accomplishes something and it's like, quote unquote, minor, we're all like, oh, good job. That's so great. But if like you were to do the equivalent in your field with that, you'd be like, well, I could have done better. I could have done this. And so we're just negative with ourselves. So I'm not going to sit yeah. here and say, oh, if you do these three things, you're going to have a, a much better outlook on life. And you're going to be this positive person all the time and always positive thoughts. I think that's like, although there's probably a place for that, I'm a, a little bit more of a realist when it comes to just like, I understand there are stressors. There are there's money issues. There's relationship issues. There's right. work issues. There's so many things. So maybe if we can address it from a different perspective, it can help us versus just be positive. Yeah. Just, just, just be grateful for what you have. That's easy to say and not easy to do because again, we, we are in the weeds of our own life and we don't take yeah. this high level view. We look at every red light along the way. We don't look at the journey and say, oh, we saved 30 minutes, right? right. So it's a matter of just, I'm trying to give perspective to kind of what I'm gonna talk about because I do believe in a positive mindset. I really do believe there's a lot of power in having a positive mindset. I believe that you know, you're, you're better off with that. It's easier than having a negative one, but it's hard. And there's the reality of the world we live in is that's not always necessarily the possibility of it. And we can get into uh, specific things like vision boards and, and the effectiveness of those or 
you know, brain waves when you're in a positive mind or manifestation, if we get to it, but those are things that I feel are important, but also trip up a lot of people at the same time. Yeah. So food for thought on that, but one thing, so I'll get right into it. Number one on my yeah. list of things to kind of like help you overcome a negative slash lack of confidence mindset is creating perspective of the journey, right? Yeah. Creating perspective on the journey that you're on. So what does that mean? I like to sum this up as don't, you, no one wears heels when they're going hiking. That's <laughs> that's the best summary, okay? And what does that mean? If you are planning a hiking trip, right. you are not going to be wearing, like your plan is to wear nice hiking shoes to go because you know the terrain is going to be rocky along yes. the way. Now, if you didn't know you were going, you thought you were going on a work trip or just hanging out with your friends, going to the bar, you might wear heels because the expectation of what you're doing is significantly different. Right. And that's where a lot of people have trouble is their expectation of what they're trying to do does not match the reality of what's actually going to happen. I think that's right. where the negative cycle happens. That's where people give up. They quit. They're done. They get frustrated. And, and then they start over in six months because they found a new fad diet or whatever it might be. So that's yeah. my first part is creating perspective on the journey. So what does that mean in terms of fitness and nutrition? If your goal is just use the avatar of losing 40 pounds, okay? That's going to be kind of the how I talk about it. Okay. If your goal is to lose 40 pounds and you say, okay, I'm going to lose one pound a week for 40 weeks, which is a very reasonable goal. Now, right. in your mind, you're thinking, let's say you weigh 200 pounds, okay? So you're trying to get to 160. And you're in your mind every week, 199, 198, 197, 196, right? And you might weigh yourself daily. And if you yeah. do that, in, in your head, it's like 199.8, 199.6. And like you're going to do that daily in your head, right? So we think linearly on progress. But the reality of weight loss is that, number one, the body doesn't want to do it, doesn't like change. I talked about before. Yeah. And it's not a linear line. It is like right. the stock market. It goes up. It goes down. The journey is not like this. It's yeah, it's like this, right? And the key is consistency with that, which is a whole other topic. But- if you can plan, so if you don't plan for negatives, right? So let's say you lose five pounds in the first five weeks. You're feeling great. It's working. You're on schedule. And then you had a wedding that you forgot about. Then you had, then your friends, hey, it's my birthday. We're going out. We're going to Buffalo Wild Wings. We got to eat. You have some wings, right? And next thing you know, on Monday or whatever your day is to weigh yourself, which I don't necessarily recommend generally, but let's just say that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're, you're up a pound. Well, now you're only down four pounds in five weeks. And then maybe you don't lose a pound the next week, right? And then, right. And then seven weeks go by and you're only down eight. Like it's one of those things where, and after 12 weeks, you're only down seven pounds. And now yeah. what? Now you're like, oh man, like I'm five pounds below. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, is this working? And then maybe in 15 weeks, you're only down seven pounds. And, and then you're three weeks of not losing any weight whatsoever. Right. right? When you go into the goal and don't realize, and, and this happens to you and you don't prepare for it, it's yeah. bad, right? It sucks. Like, man, I'm only halfway to where I should be at currently, which means it's going to take me even longer to hit my goal. It's already going to take me 40 weeks to do it. Like, and that's when the negative, is this worth it? This is stupid. What am I doing wrong? Then you start looking, how do I, like, having trouble losing weight and I'm not, you know, all these different things. Yeah. But the reality is that the the issue you're having at week seven to week 15 was actually always a part of the journey. Yeah. You just didn't account for it. Right. right. It's like, it's like paying a bill that was always there. Like, Oh my God, I totally forgot. I have Netflix. I got to pay yeah. that 50, that 20, whatever that crazy number is right now, that's 20 yeah. bucks a month. And, but that was always there. You were watching. You just forgot you had to pay it. Right. The same concept applies here is the, the obstacles in your way are always there. You just didn't have the knowledge and understanding that it was going to be there. And now that you're facing it, you're all negative because you didn't realize you had to plan for that. So the reality yeah. is you should have planned to lose 40 pounds in 55 weeks versus 40 because of pitfalls. Now, again, that's a very broad example. But right. The overarching concept is that when you plan for things to go wrong, you are going to be less negative because you already knew it was going to happen and you already have a plan in place for it. And right. that is my first tip is plan for things to go wrong. It's never going to go perfect. I and if it. you know going into it that, okay, if my I have a weight loss journey, I know that I'm not going to lose a pound a week or a half pound or two pounds, whatever the goal is. Yeah. I know I'm going to build that into the program. I'm not going to be able to predict the exact week it happens, but if yeah. you build it into the program, you're going to feel so much better and you're going to be way less negative because you accounted for it. You knew it was going to happen. 
Exactly. Exactly. I love it because we don't really ever account for it. You know, we just, it just, we do it. And then we we're like, oh shit, you know, oh my God, you know, for the, you know, like I'll give an example. I went out with friends during, we, we celebrated, we had some, we had some drinks and then all of a sudden I went on the, I went on the scale because I have this neuroticness. I always have to weigh myself, which is the worst thing to do in the world. Terrible. And I get on the scale and I'm three pounds up. I'm like, oh, you know, and I know that in a couple of days, it's going to go, it's going to drop down to my original weight. But at that moment, it's like, you know, you don't plan for it. And then it's like, you're like, oh, now I got to wait three days. I got to eat well. I got to make sure I do this. So it goes down and then you're all stressed out at all, you know, and it's, it's, it brings in that negativity, you know, and it's like, it, you know, it, you really have to like, you know, really plan like you said put into your head that life is not perfect that you will have your ups and downs and you know and we're meant to we're not you know you can't be on carrots and celery the whole lot your whole life you have to eat a healthy diet and and plan to have a little fun too that way you could actually st stay healthy because i think when we try to be too good then we get sick of being good and then we go back to a really unhealthy way of living yeah i mean people always it's funny because as a trainer i go out in public which is crazy and everyone's like, oh, you can have that slice of pizza. Oh, you can have that donut. I go, I don't think you understand. I eat worse than you because 80, 85% of the time I eat way better than you. And when I want to go out and have pizza, have a burger, have, you know, whatever it is, mozzarella sticks, donuts and cookies are kind of my vice. And yeah. I will, I will, now again, I can overeat too. I binge eat, you know, no one ever has one munchkin donut. You have 10 or 15. And that's what I, yeah. I do. The same thing. I have a big sweet tooth. The difference is I eat awesome the other 85% of the time. And then when I want to eat like crap, I can't, I have the full ability and I don't, you know, I don't work and because I have the, maybe I, I maybe have a di different discipline set, but because I have the knowledge understanding of like, I'm not going to weigh myself. I don't care. Like it's one of those things where I don't care about the scale anymore. Yeah. I look at, I look at it for trending data, but I have that knowledge base to understand like, okay, this is what it's going to be like. Here's what I'm doing. And I know if I eat this, there's going to be a negative consequence. I'm going to feel lethargic. I'm going to be more tired. I'm not going to have a, for example, if I go out on a, let's just say Saturday night and mm -hmm. I drink a few beers, have pizza. I know for a fact that if I go lift on Sunday, let's just say I'm doing a bench press, I know for a fact that it's going to be significantly harder to do the same as I did last week yeah. when I stayed in, had a great night of sleep, and, and had ate really healthy. Right? There, like, there's a huge difference there. Yeah. Now, we don't track that, but I, I mean, I, 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 I can feel that because, like, oh man, why did I do? five less reps this week on bench press. And I did last week at the same weight. That's ridiculous. Like, am yeah. I weaker? Am I, am I, you know, again, if you don't prepare for it, am I weaker? Am I not doing this? Do I, do I need creatine? Do I need to get on? Like, what do I need to do to, to make this work? It's like, or, or you slept poorly or you ate like crap or you drank or, you know, it's just not your day. It's like, there's so many different reasons for it. Yeah. So that's the idea is I'm able to prepare. And so I don't get, again, Am I still negative? Of course. I think negativity is part of how we do things. So to say that you're not going to be negative, I think is very disingenuous. Yeah. Maybe if you're a monk or some guru out there, it's just not me. But I can at least mitigate how that feeling can disrupt what yeah. I'm trying to do. And therefore, I can continue without feeling too guilty, without having too much regret. And just know yeah. that this is part of it. Keep going. Now, if you're never seeing results then we have to talk about what you're actually doing and change things up. But right. again, for those of you who are on the right path and doing it, that, that's the first piece of advice I would give you is start preparing for it, right? Don't let little things like this get in the way, prepare for it. And if you don't know what to prepare for, just say something bad is going to happen or something negative that I don't want is going to happen, I'm ready for it. And just mark it off when it happens and, you, and add three of them to your list. You don't have to know exactly what it is, but you can plan for at least something yeah. to happen. I agree. Oh, I agree. Totally. I, I think that's a great way of looking at things. I think it, it's a, it's a positive way of looking at things and it prepares you, you know, so you're not, if things don't go perfectly and, and you go up or down and you, you know, you know, that is part of life. So you're not going to get yourself overwhelmed by it. I think that's a great, great, great idea. Great concept of, of viewing things. Well, thank you. I actually thought of a good example. If you're driving to work mm -hmm. and it takes you 30 minutes without traffic to get to work, Right. How long are you going to give yourself to get to work? Right. The answer should be about 45 minutes, right? Give or take your area. Because if, if there's no traffic, you're golden. But if there's one thing that happens, you are screwed and you're going to be late to work. And now, you, and now you're five minutes late, whatever happens. So yeah. you always want to build in buffer when you're traveling. 
that the same exact concept applies when you are trying to get in shape or eat yes. healthy or whatever, same concept applies. That's so true. That's so true. And do you, do you think people should like, is it good to journal and write like a food diary and then maybe keep a couple of pages and, and, and think about, you know, you know, different things that might disrupt my life, you know, and try to like, you know, try to change the mindset a little bit. So people are prepared to think a little bit differently and break I out do. of bad habits. I do. And that's my third point. So we can okay. skip to, we can skip to number three. No, no, um, no, no. Go to number two. Go to number okay. two. They're not in any order, but the number two. So we'll get to, we will get to journaling and all that. And people might be surprised at my answer. So don't, if you're like rolling your eyes journaling, like, hold on, like, let me, let me explain. Um, number two is building social proof. All right. So the reason we are not positive or confident is because we are unsure of ourselves. So how do you become more sure of yourself? You create evidence that you can do the thing. Yeah. All right. So we're negative because maybe we're unsure. We're not, we don't know what's happening and why we're not seeing results because we don't understand what's going on. So to understand what's going on, you need to just do better at what you're doing. It's just yeah. that simple. So just, or do more of it. Right. And it, right. if you do more of it, you'll get better. It's, it's just, there's a direct correlation to this. Yeah. So how do you become more confident? How do you build this social proof? Well, it's, you put your head down and you take the next smallest action item that you can take. So for example, if you're someone who is, I need to lose weight, so I need to start working out, how do I do that? Okay, well, first thing is go online and Google closest gyms and then compare the pricing of all the gyms. What do they have? What do you want? And after 10 minutes, you just pick a gym. Don't do not dwell and just pick one, right? It's low right. decision making. You pick your gym. Next thing you know, uh, online or call, you pay for it. Next right. thing. Uh, put on your calendar what days you're going to go. Next thing, how long? Next thing, right? Each small, and this is just every day. Do one of these things, right? After a week, you'll have so. So if you did one of these every single day, so first thing is you know look at the gym. Second day is call the gym and get uh and get a membership. Third day is plan out your week of how you're going to work out. Third day or fourth day is how long. You know, fifth day is make sure you have the right equipment. Sixth day is pack your bag ahead of time. And then seventh day is set your alarm, right? Like you can literally do one of these a day. And in one week, you'll be going to the gym because it's right. this very small. I'm not saying go to the gym five days a week. I'm saying just get your schedule going, right? And yes. it might be, I'm going to go twice a week. And you take the next smallest action item to get there. And it's, okay, I need to set my alarm at six o'clock and I have to have my bag ready the night before. And I have to start my car. Like there's little things you can do yeah. to create social proof. And then as you do these things, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with college football, but FSU, Florida State University, has stars on their helmets. And I believe the purpose of the stars, when I what I was what I was reading, is that for every good thing you do at practice, you get a star in your helmet to show that you did something well. Well, that's literally the definition of creating social proof. The more stars you have, the the more you have done. So right. I would recommend literally creating a, a spreadsheet or a list somewhere. I do spreadsheets. I love those. A little checkbox. Yeah. Every time you do something that helps you or aligns with the goal, check it off. I did X. It doesn't matter how small it is because now you are creating that social proof that I am this person. I'm doing this stuff. I'm, I'm taking the actions and you'll find that in a month later. Wow. I've learned a lot more and it could be as simple as, okay, I went to the gym. You know, I, I, let's say you want to go to the gym twice a week, three days a week. Yeah. Every time you go, you check it up. I went to the gym, whether you walked, lift, whatever, right? Did you go? Yes. That's the checkbox, right? Now you yeah. have three. Now you have six. Now you have 12, uh, what, nine, 12 right. checkboxes for the month. Yeah. And now you have those 12 checkboxes. Well, I did it 12 times. You are now looking at tangible social proof that you can literally go to the gym. And right. the next step is just keep learning and keep doing it over and over and over again. So to get, so to build confidence to get out of a negative mindset is to build social proof, right. not to say you won't be negative along the way. Okay. That's yeah. fine. And I'll get into that on section four. Right. But the idea is you have to take action steps along the way and just keep whatever the smallest thing that wherever you're at, meet you where you're at, take those steps, push forward. And that is how I'd say you build social proof because of course you're going to suck at first. I sucked it. I mean, my first, I, I kid you not, my first two times at a gym, one, I was a junior in high school and I was on the track team and all the track guys are lifting weights in the gym, the school gym, around all your little friends. And they put on, I'm, I weigh a buck 25 soaking wet in high school. I'm, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a sprinter. So I'm, I'm kind of small and they put on 185 pounds on the barbell. If you guys don't know what that is, it's 245s, 225s. Okay. Just for everyone, in, you know, your lifters out there, Yeah, yeah. I get under the bar and I, they, they help me lift it up and it goes straight to my chest. I'm sitting there stuck and yeah. they help, but talk about embarrassment. Talk about having no, I, I didn't know. I was, I just did what the guys told me to do. 
my second time at a gym at a, a public gym away from the school. Cause I was like, I don't want to work out with them anymore. I was like, okay, I'll do it myself <laughs> is I got on this machine and I was doing some rowing motion and I realized, or so I didn't realize the trainer walks over to me. And by the way, I am a personal trainer, right? So like, this is it's hilarious. The personal trainer walks over to me and goes, Hey, you're doing this wrong. I go, what do you mean? Like, it's actually a chess machine, not a row machine. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. thank you like i'm literally facing the wrong direction on the machine i think it was oh, a fly or whatever it was and i'm like like a, you know yeah what am i like 16 years old like super embarrassed like oh my gosh like can't and so this happens like I, I didn't know what i didn't know and then of course like you had the people who have a plan they get to the gym all excited they go oh crap they're all intimidated so they walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes they do bicep curls and they leave right yeah. well at least you did something and eventually you'll grow and learn but the biggest thing you can do when you're also looking for social proof and so and a little added benefit here is look around at what people are doing study yeah. them what if you're on the treadmill walking look around at other people what are they doing are they, oh, I didn't know how to use a machine. I'm going to look at what they're doing. Are they using that? Oh, that looks interesting. That's how I learned for the first yeah. couple of years. I'm like, what are they doing? I wasn't always a trainer. So I'm like, okay, go on YouTube. How do I do this? Oh, that's what this machine does. And I just started building it up. And then as I started to learn, okay, that's how you use this machine. That's yeah. how, you, and then I have my core seven workouts. I'm feeling confident, feeling great. And then I could see, it, oh, oh, what's that? And then you go on YouTube. I just did my own research. It doesn't take, yeah. it takes 10 seconds. It doesn't take very long. But as my knowledge built and as my experience built with that, those two things, social proof was everywhere. I just started building, 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 building. And then my confidence grew. The negative mindset of, I can't do this. I, oh, this is so embarrassing. Everyone's going to laugh at me. I don't know what I'm doing. It would slowly fade out. Yeah. And then I became kind of one of the people who was like, hey, like this guy knows what he's doing over here and he's seeing great results. So yeah. building social proof is super important because not only does it show yourself you can do it, but you also get to see results and it's great. Yeah. And it helps that negative mindset cycle because then as you get the experience, you're going to feel a lot better. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I like how you mentioned about the, you use the, the football players with the stars on their, on their helmets, you know, and giving yourself a little either mental or physical reward somehow, like when you do something really good, I think is great too. I think it really, it, it, it makes you proud of yourself. And I think it boosts your self-esteem up too. Something I did uh, to help create social proof recently is I had a whiteboard on my wall and it, it definitely boot like you're right. It definitely boosts. Like it, it made me feel good as I had like seven categories. Uh, one was, um, you know, did you eat that cookie at night? Right. <laughs> um, one was go being in the sauna. One was, you know, did you, you know, pack your stuff the night before? Like little thing, just nothing crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I would see the check marks. Uh, obviously for the cookie, it was, did I not eat it? Right. And then I, yeah, yeah. and then I could see, okay, this week, you know, of the cookie, I hit four out of seven. Like I did well, four to seven times. My goal right. was to hit five. Right. But I can see, I can see, okay, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I can see the proof. Cause we tend to forget, right. I don't remember what I had for breakfast three days ago. I mean, like exactly. you got, get it out of your head. The more you get it out of your head, uh, the more you can see it. And I have weeks worth of just data of like, wow, I did all of this stuff. Yeah. That's great. And now I can look back and say, I did all this. I can, I can push forward. I did all this. I can push forward and exactly. I can grow and, and I can get to that new level. And so and it empowers you. You feel good. Like, wow, oh, this work I did, like I really did all this. And then yeah. it also maybe makes it a little bit more logical than emotional. And so, oh, I didn't do well this week. Right. Obviously I had this, but I could do better next week. And it's almost a challenge sometimes too, if you're yeah. in challenges. So that's another piece that someone could take away is that write a board, like get a board, get a, get a bunch of things where you write down what you have to do. Here's your seven days a week. Here's the five items. And every time you do it, check it off, bang, social proof. And you start creating it over and over again. Every time you go to the gym, social proof. Every time you don't eat the cookie, social proof. And then exactly. eventually you start maybe not necessarily believing in it, but like that positive mentality of, wow, I'm doing such a good job because I see all this evidence will lead to better and big, bigger and better results. Yeah. It gives you positive energy. I think it makes you more enthusiastic to really want to keep going with it when you start seeing yourself yeah. actually sticking to the program and, and really, and then starting to see results from it is, is tremendous, I think. Yeah, I think so. So that, that's big for me. I'm a big social proof guy. Use small action steps. So that's my number two on the um, uh, on the four of the Scott's piece of advice. Hopefully you like it. I do like it. I think you know people want results real quick, and they want they want you know they they want to jump from A to Z. But it's really anything anything you do is baby steps, baby steps, and those baby steps equal to something big at the end of the rainbow. But to get there, 
it's all baby steps, you know, yeah. one little thing at a time. You can't expect more from yourself, you know, and I think too many people try to put too much pressure on themselves. And I think that's where failure can kind of set in. Well, and what's more important? Is it, is it, or what, what's more likely? Like you, you start a goal and you jump in right away. The most likely outcome, most likely, not all the time, but most likely outcome of starting something too quickly, diving in like a New Year's resolution, five days a week at the gym, just starting out, is that you are going to fail and burn out, period. Yes. Versus, and then and then what happens is you stop for six months, start up again, stop, start. And then five years later, you are literally, literally in the exact same position you were in five years ago. Or yeah. is it better to say, okay, I will delay instant gratification right now. I will start slow. But because I start slow and build consistency over time, I'm gonna in, in one year, I'm gonna have all the results I wanted to have. What's right. better? Well, we initially think it's better to do the just jump in because I want instant results. It'll take longer to go slower. I don't need that. But you don't account for the rebound effect of just gaining, losing, gaining, losing, starting, stopping, starting, stopping versus yeah. just go and just, just slowly get it. And you're gonna see way better outcomes that way. And I see failure like that all the time is that they jump in it, they get fast results, and then all of a sudden, you know, within within a short period of time, they start to fall back and then they start to gain the weight that they lost, you know? Yeah. And I, it's like a, like, like the rubber band effect in a sense, you know? And it's, I think if you, it, to me, it's like, it's creating a healthy lifestyle, like make it part of your lifestyle. Don't think of it as dieting. Think of it as, okay, this is a new way that I'm going to start living my life. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, I think the evidence is from uh, the biggest loser. They did a study on like 13 or 14 of the contestants of the biggest loser over a five year period. I think it was a five year period where yeah. basically like they, they all, what they all lost hundreds of pounds in a very rapid sense, which is what yeah. I'm not advocating for. And what they found was in over the course, I think, I believe it was five years that basically every single person gained all the weight back. Some oh, wow. of them gained more weight back oh, really? and, and they screwed up their metabolism along the way. Like, oh, and because wow. they lost the weight so quickly, their metabolism wasn't able to recover. So therefore it was actually harder if they wanted to, to lose weight the second time around because they screwed yeah. up the first time. And it just kind of goes to show that like, you can lose as much weight as you want as fast as you can. It, it, the question is, can you sustain that? And can you keep it off? And the reality is the vast majority of us, myself included, probably cannot do that because we are not yeah. built this way. And that's why, and it's tough because we want to do that because we think we can, but the reality is that's how most people fail is they start too soon. There's no plan. And then they have no knowledge, no skill set, no experience. And then bang, life hits them. They revert back and now they're stuck and they don't know what to do. And then uh, whatever, I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll just, not to be mean. I'll just, oh, I'll be fat the rest of my life because I can't yeah. do anything else. I tried, I failed. Oh, it's not my, it's not all oh, my genetics. It's like, okay. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's what, that's what happened. Like, I'm not to be mean. I'm just, that's, that's what we no, hear. I, I reality see it all is the time. Yeah. like so many people, and this is totally off topic. I would wager to say, and, and I'm not a doctor. I have no, I'm just from my experience. Right. So many people, I won't give a percentage because it's just, I'll get, I'll absolutely get reamed out. But so many people who get surgeries or go to the doctor for specific issues. Yeah. Most likely could be fixed with some like just stretching yeah. like it like i have this low back pain in my shoulder if you literally would just focus on doing like i'm not saying to take yoga but like doing specific stretches yeah consistently for a handful of weeks i would wager to say a lot of people would feel significantly better versus yeah. needing surgery on something that isn't really a thing exactly uh, and, and i felt the same way i'm like i was in tremendous pain for like two years with my shoulder, I yeah. thought I need, I thought I tore something. Right. It turns out it. Tur I swear it turns out, and I could not. I could not do a push up. I right. could not like lift my hand over my head. Everything hurt. I, it was so painful. And I had roommates who were just like, "What is? I, I couldn't do anything. Didn't go to the gym for two years. I had to do something. This, this weird stuff." Yeah. Turns out it was just a t literally a tight rotator cuff muscle, super oh, really? tight, and it took months to undo it. But yeah. like I didn't, and I now I feel great. It's unbelievable. I'm like, wow, this I cannot believe that's all it was. The amount of pain I was in does not correlate with just stretching, and yet there it was. So, but and I don't want to get into stretching. The idea is though, like we do things, and, and, and like we don't have we have weird expectations of what should happen. But the reality yeah. is, we don't. It doesn't have to happen this way. It, there's other ways to solve the problem, but we just jump into things thinking that that's the best way. But if we take a step back and go, okay, maybe if I just go slower, maybe if I do this, maybe if I just learn a little, like things will go a lot better for us yeah. versus needing this instant gratification and doing all these things super fast and, exactly. and, and then seeing results and not seeing results because of it.
And when you mentioned super fast, I thought about a friend of mine who lost her weight super fast. She joined one of these programs and she lost a ton of weight, but then her hair started thinning out because it was just the reaction of her body went into kind of like of a shock from oh losing the weight so quick. And, and, and then she was struggling trying to get her hair to back to healthiness, but it was all because she did one of these rapid weight loss programs and it it just had an effect on on her hair follicles and her hair and and so forth. It's unfortunate. No, it's unfortunate. Yeah, that sucks. That's there you go. <laughs> it just shows you how your body can go into shock sometimes. You know, like it's not it's not meant to. Everything should be gradually, like you said. You yeah, know? at least that at least that's my take on it. Obviously, there's probably some evidence out there somewhere that you know rapid. I agree works. with you. Yeah, but, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so hope and hopefully most <laughs> people do. So we'll see. Some guru, some guru out there disagrees with me, so it's fine. <laughs> Um, uh, so the third thing I'm kind of building a resiliency and building confidence, uh, on there. So I'll get to the third one is, and this is what you talked about earlier, but basically developing self-awareness and introspective thought. Okay. So being a more aware when you're having negative self-talk is super important. And then being able to break that down. Okay. So there's two aspects. One, being able to identify that you are kind of being negative for me. I don't know what it is. I have a lot of conversations in my head about things I think are going to happen or just I'm angry at someone. I'll have like a, we'll have a fake argument yeah, that yeah, never yeah. actually happens. Yeah. I'm like, and I used to do it. And now I'm like, now that I discovered kind of more about just self-awareness and self-reflection. I go, okay, I go, I'll be walking to my car and I'll be in a good mood. And I'll start thinking about something I was mad about. And I'll start having a full on conversation about why I'm mad about it. I go, whoa, whoa, whoa what are you doing? Like, stop. Like, there's no reason to just use all your, like, just have this negative energy in your life right now. Yeah. And cause it's, it's, you're just draining energy. Yeah. So number one, learning to be aware of it. I don't have the best way to, to learn to be aware of it. I think that just as you think about things, um, it, it's just giving, don't, don't just be an autopilot. This is the best way, but don't be an autopilot. Like, when you're yeah. talking, when you're thinking, if you're sitting at your desk or you're at home and you're just having an internal monologue, learning to just kind of be like, okay, wait, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Why am I, why am I starting to get mad? Why is my heart rate going up? Why am I sweating? Why, why yeah. is my jaw clenched? Why is my tongue on the roof of my mouth? And why are my shoulders shrugged? Those yeah. are all physiological signs that like, okay, we're, 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 we're tense. Why? And then learning to break it down. So breaking it down is kind of where you get into the strategic aspect of it. Yeah. And that is self-reflection, journaling, meditation, and breath work for mm -hmm. general. There's probably more, but those are four of the main ones. Yeah. So I think, you know, I'm not a big, I need to get into more journaling. Uh, I'm not big into it. I, you know, it's it's hard for me. Number one, because I have terrible handwriting. <laughs> Number two, it, it takes me a lot of time. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not going to do this right now. But I do think it's powerful. I have done it. I do think it's powerful. Um, it didn't quite resonate. I think meditation resonates them of the four I mentioned. And like yeah. that meditates the most. Uh, meditates, that resonates the most. And uh, self-reflection is kind of part of that. But you kind of mix and match. But those are four medians that you can use in order to start developing self-awareness. So, right. and the reason self-awareness is important, if you can create, if you can understand why you feel a certain way, then you can break down how to overcome it. Okay. So yeah. that makes a, for example, I'll give you a real specific example. If you're doing a uh, journaling on, you know, how you felt on the day or what your gym experience was like, right? And, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, whatever it is, oh, I was feeling a little self-conscious because the person over here was in super shape and I was kind of waddling around or I, I felt good because I went to the gym. All the negative ones, you can look at, okay, so why were you feeling self-conscious? Right. Well, and then you could break that down and in the journal. Okay. So why? Uh, well, I was, I was self-conscious because I'm not where they're at yet. Okay. But like, why should that affect you? Well, I guess it shouldn't affect me. Right. And then like, you can like, you kind of break down like, and then, yeah. so may, so, and then goal, maybe next time when I see someone, I will appreciate that they like, they're at a different point than I'm at yeah. and encouraging because I can get there because they got there. Right. right. So if someone looks like that, I could probably get there too. Right. Yeah. So there are ways to turn the negative. Like I see guys at the gym who are jacked. I mean, just like disgust. I, mean, I don't know what their deal is or I don't know what their story is, their experience. I don't know if they're using steroids or not. All I know is they go, wow. Like, I, and yeah, I'm jealous, but I'm like, I can do that. Like if they can do it, right. I know yeah. and I have to keep, I, I'm not at their point, but like, yeah. I know I can. And that's kind of how you flip the script on like being envious of the gym or being whatever, but it's self-reflection. It's journaling. It's whatever yes. your immediate meditation, same concept. I think all of it's the same. The power of journaling over meditation is 
what I think important because I am the kind of person with a lot going on in my head. Yeah. And I need to get it out sometimes. Yeah. And if you don't get it out, it's like a whirlwind of crap. Oh yeah. Right. right. So sure. if you're, if you're mad, right. Just every, it's a world. Imagine a giant tornado just breezing around your apartment with there's a mini, mini tornado in your apartment, breezing around and you have, you have things flying through the air. You're dodging them. But when you write it down, everything just kind of stops in its place. Yeah. And just, and just, I'm just random things on my desk. I'm just throwing mm-hmm. things out there. Everything just stops on your, in your place and you can actually look and see, okay whoa and you kind of grab it move it move, you organize it once it's yeah. out of your head if it's in your head there's so many concurring thoughts happening that you can't even organize it's almost like a dream right and it's just it's so frustrating it's so negative it's toxic it's like it, it makes you so tense that's why uh, journaling is super i think super important because it does get the thoughts out of your head yeah. not to say you have to but that's been my experience with it now you might be asking well, why'd you stop i stopped because you stop at things i tried doing it and i, I got life caught me off guard and i didn't plan for it and i gotta get yeah. back into it it happens to the best of us like that's the honesty right. of it meditation yeah. like i i still meditate i try to do it at least a handful of times a week that's kind right. of my i like do that more even if for five minutes because le- you're not getting out of your head, but at least you can start asking yourself questions. Okay, like, here, how did I do today? How did I do towards my goal? And you just ask yourself some pointing questions. So here's some pointing yeah. questions for you. How did I do with my goal today? Did I do the actions I said I was going to do? If I did not do them, why did I not do them? And yeah. how can I avoid that next time? Right? There's some, there you go. Four questions you can ask yourself right now. And then you come up with, you come up with, building social proof that you can overcome those obstacles moving forward, right. or overcome those thoughts moving forward. So yeah. if you were super mad at you know, missing the gym because of X, Y, and Z, identify that and then work to do it. So it's really about breaking things down from yeah. its giant monster self into its smallest parts so that you can identify how to overcome it and therefore actually, and then use the action items to actually overcome it. So right. that that's my number three is really developing that self-awareness to talk, like to stop the self-talk, stop the negative self-talk and really identify, okay, why am I feeling this way? What's going on? And how do I avoid this moving forward? So yeah. a good example for me is I get really annoyed with myself and this is a small problem. So I'm, I'm just, <laughs> it's, an yeah, yeah. it's very small is if I don't pack the night before, it takes me an extra 10 minutes in the morning to, to, to get out the door. Cause I'm just like, what do I wear? Where's everything? How do I pack? Uh, my mind's just kind of waking up. Right. I go right from where I go bathroom, brush my teeth. I'm out there. I'm trying to be out the door, right? I'm, I'm yeah. ready to go. I don't waste a lot of time. And if I don't do that, I have to wait like an extra 10 minutes, which is again, on the back end, that's right. when I lose the time. I need the 10 minutes. I gotta go to work. And yeah. so I lose some of my extra. I get really mad when I do that. So my whole thing is identify, okay, why am I so mad? Okay, I need to get this stuff done before. So I did a whole like, okay, so what do I have to do? By this time, by the, you know, by by 8.30, I need to start packing my bag, like, you know, do this, set this up, put it right here. Because if I don't do it, right. I'm going to lose 10 minutes and the X, Y, Z, I'm going to feel like crap. I'm being annoyed, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that's how I did it. And so now I am more likely to pack my bag ahead of time. Now you can talk about you know, having it up on the wall and doing all those different things, but I was able to break down why I was feeling a certain way. Like, man, I'm just super mad at this workout. Why? Well, dial it back to the morning. I, yeah. I was, I got, for whatever reason, that pissed me off. And now, yeah. I, how do I avoid getting pissed off? It's I avoid that situation and so on and so exactly. forth. Or again, so there's certain things you can do to identify behaviors and emotional reactions and then identify how to avoid those and then move forward in that direction. That's my number three. Yeah, I, I think that's great. I think that's amazing. I love journaling and I, I love, I love to do meditation and I feel especially meditation is very powerful. And like you said, you don't have to do it for a very long time. You could just do it for a couple of minutes and you notice the difference right away. And I think it's all about getting it out because we hold so much in, but once we get it out, I think we, we can just focus on more positive aspect of life and really focus on what matters and how to deal, deal with the stuff that's thrown against us, you know, when it's, when you know out of the blue sometimes things you know like you like like maybe a friend says oh come on let's go let's go and have like lunch together you go and then you know that you put on three pounds of water you know so then it's like you know so it's like you know things just just things just don't happen exactly i think a lot of people too it depends on your personality some people plan exactly how the day is going to be and when the day does not exactly happen like that you know people get all stressed out about it and it's so funny how sometimes you said that sometimes in your head, you'll have the conversation with you. And I used to do that. And then I would see myself get really upset. Like the conversation never occurred, but I was thinking about a certain situation that happened. Then I was thinking about 
what, you know, if I said this, the person might say this and blah, 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 blah. And then I saw myself, my emotions starting to get negative and I was starting to get upset over something that didn't even happen. Yeah. Oh my God. So I'm not the only one who does that. Like, no. Do it, it's constant. And again, I, I've gotten so much better. I mean, night and day from, you know, a few years oh, yeah. ago. I, I stop myself but, from doing that and I try to catch myself when I do it. But yeah, you, you something really emotionally bothers you and you focus on it but you focus on it to the point where you're really going so deep into it it hasn't even gotten that far yet but in your head you know the other person's personality and what might occur and then you see your emotions starting to like really like starting to get negative or getting upset or getting angry and you haven't even that situation hasn't even occurred yet it, or ever it might never occur yeah exactly right? we've had, i think it was i forgot who said it but we've we've had a great many fears most of which have never happened yeah. And it's just like, I, I I apologize. I don't remember who said that. Um, Thomas Paine, maybe. I don't know. But uh, Aquinas, <laughs> someone, someone, <laughs> someone famous. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I totally agree with that. I think that that's very common for people and you just get worked up and especially when it comes to our own health and the, oh, the weight says this, scale says this, get so wrapped up. And like, again, a couple of ways to build perspective is, is this going to matter in a year? Is this going to matter in five years? Am I going to be exactly. mad about that? Like, and because the, and I, I would talk about like, almost relational or work things, but those do play a part in energy to work out. If you're working out to work and you're just dead tired from work, yes. well, you're not going to want to do it. So, but, oh, sure. okay. So how do you gain energy back? Well, you build perspective, you build, you know, a, a, it's easy to say, right. Build a gratitude mindset, be grateful. And it's hard, right? It's hard. Like it's very difficult to do that because you are in the situation you're in and you're in the weeds of it. And you, it's hard to see a 30,000 foot view, but mm -hmm. if you can like, Every so often, right? I have, I have a couple of videos. One where I can see there's a space video where like literally like you have the earth and it just basically zooms all the way out. So it's like, literally we don't exist. And like, yeah. in, so it's like, okay, like, do I, like, does it actually matter? Right? Like, does, like is the, does this thing really play that big of an impact in my life? Or, yeah. you know, is this going to matter in five years? That's another perspective. Ask yourself these questions, right? Or why am I mad about this? And right. how, it's, little things like that go a long way. It might not sound like it does, but it really does go a long way. And as you do it, you learn ways that resonate with you. Because these resonate with me, but it doesn't resonate with everyone. Right. And then you kind of find your way through it. Yeah. Um, but and, and I, I also like to think, point out, sorry, I like to point out that like both of us have literally said we have constant conversations with ourselves about negative things all the time. I think that's very encouraging because a lot of people think that trainers and coaches are so different that they haven't figured out. It's like, no, literally we just, we understand the coping mechanisms and we do them more often than you. And we do them more consistently than you do. Right. Than most, not you, than, than most people do. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. what we're trying to teach you. It's not that we're perfect or someone out there, oh, just be positive all the time. It's like, yeah, thanks. That was so helpful. I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm better. You, I didn't realize that was the cure. It's like, well, how do you actually do that? Yeah. And then I also think when they give you the advice to do it and it doesn't work, it's even more discouraging because it's like, well, I did the, I did the five affirmations in the morning. I did the vision board. I did this. And yet I still feel like crap. So maybe, <laughs> and then you come to the wrong conclusion that, well, I guess I'll never be happy. I guess I'll never be positive. I guess my mindset's always negative. Right. And I think that's the wrong takeaway because I think that the concept of always being happy and always being motivated, it's just wrong. I don't really yeah. like that. I think there's a place for it. I think you should be more so yeah. and less stressed, but it, it takes time to get there. It's not it instant time. gratification. You no, have to build sure. social proof that you can be more positive. So exactly, yeah. exactly. And you have to catch yourself when you are in moments like that, because life is not perfect. We have our ups and downs. And when we do see ourselves going down, we have to really stop ourselves somehow, learn techniques that work, like the te techniques that you were talking about, and then apply it to our lives so we get ourselves out of it. You know, and, and that's the key is, like you said, just knowing that we're going through it and then taking a step back, maybe meditating for a few seconds, calming ourselves down, and then reapproaching it differently. Exactly. And I know it sounds like if you've never done it before, I know it sounds a little woo woo, but like, try <laughs> it, maybe just like take five minutes, try it, do it a few times. Like, it, it's definitely very beneficial if you if this is one of the issues that you have. Right. And it takes practice, you know, you get better and better and better as you work on yourself, you learn you I think you learn more about yourself and how your body really tick tocks, you know, and, and you really know, un, have a better understanding what works and what doesn't work for yourself, because sometimes people don't really analyze and, and, and listen to themselves, you know, and sometimes when you focus on, you know, what really makes you happy, what really makes you sad, what makes you positive, what makes you negative. How does your body react to certain things? You start reconstructing, I think, your entire life, and to a, to a an extent where you have a a a, a positive, you know, um, 
lifestyle. But of course, that lifestyle is not always going to be positive. It's going to have its ups and downs, but understanding how to try to get yourself back into the in the, the same path that you were in. That's the trick. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Now, if you had to take like everything you talked about today and you had to, you know, give some um, kind of emphasize on some takeaways that you want the listeners to focus on, what would you say? Well, here, let me do, I'll do my fourth point and then I'll go to the, the takeaway. Oh, I'm so, so do, sorry. Do, I forgot no, no, no. the fourth point. Yeah, I added it last minute, so we'll, we'll do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so there's a fourth point I want, and I touched on it a little bit because I do think this is super important. I've gone yeah. back and forth on this a few different times is that understand what getting results actually means. And I yeah. think this is a very nuanced topic, but we talk about positive mindsets and being positive, being happy, doing all this, which is valuable, right? We want to be happy. We want to have positive. We want, we want to look at the world in a positive view. I get that. Yeah. Don't let that notion hinder you from getting results. So what I mean by that, especially with fitness, because it's one of the few, I don't want to say absolutes, but absolutes, right? It's one of the few, if you do X, you're going to get Y. It's just a matter of time and effort, right? If right. you do X, you're going to get Y. Time and effort is all that's standing in your way. You don't actually need to be positive. You just actually have to do the work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, so I'm not normalizing being negative, but we should normalize that you, you know, you still just need to put in the work, even if you are in a negative mindset. So right. understanding that people, you have this, I'm going to use motivation as an example. People have this weird notion that I should be motivated. What's motivated this, this desire to do something yeah. in order for me to continue to do something. The issue is motivation is a fleeting feeling. We are not designed to be motivated constantly. We need catalyst consistently to be motivated over the, a long period of time. Right. And what happens is motivation runs out, but as you're using your motivation, you're building discipline, which is yes. habit building. And then the habits take over. What does that mean? It means on the days where you don't want to wake up and defrost your car and wait 10 minutes and drive 10 <laughs> to the gym and then warm up and your bones are hurting and you're tired and you have work and this sucks and the kid didn't sleep last night and dinner's not, all these different things, right? Yeah. You're not motivated. You're not motivated, but you are disciplined. You built the habit. So you can feel like crap. You can have as much negative self-talk as you want. Right. That does not mean you still should not do the work. Yeah. And it's okay to do the work sad, do the work angry, do the work happy, do it frustrated. Because as you do the work, as you build the social proof that you can do the work, right. then that all of that other stuff tends to go away as you start to achieve more of the goal that you set out. Right. And then it's like you wake up one day, oh, I'm less stressed. I feel better. Like I'm, you know, because I'm 40 pounds down. Yeah. You know, throughout the whole journey, you felt like crap. I'm not saying it's okay to feel like crap. Well, I guess I am. But like, it's one of those things where it's like, don't let not being motivated. Don't let a negative mindset literally stop you. Because if you can still do it, all you have to do is physically do it, right? If you, yeah. Oh, I'm so negative. This sucks. Okay, fine. Go do it. Like, yeah. and, and, Oh, I'm so tired. I, I can't go to the gym. Really? Like, like, it's one of those things where it's like, you can be negative. As long as you put in the work, you're still going to get the result. And the fitness is one of the greatest things because you can literally be angry at the gym, yeah. go work out, have a terrible, angry workout and still get results, even though you're in a bad mood. It happens yeah. all the time to me. So don't think that you need this great, oh, if I'm not happy, I can't go. In fact, it's actually better because if yeah. you think you can only work out when you're happy, you're never going to work out. Right. There's always going to be so, there's always something that happens, right? There's always something. So it, it's almost better to actually work out when you're not in a good mood because then you can build that proof that you can do it when you're not in a good mood. So right. it's a matter of just understanding that if you put in the work, if you take the action versus worrying about how you feel, you're yeah. going to get the result. And then the result will help you feel a certain way as well. Right. Okay. Exactly. It's, it, it, it's, you know, I, I'm also a big part of other you know methodology. I'm not saying this is the only one, but I do feel action is so freaking important. Yeah, that we just get is. caught up on all these different. Well, I'm not feeling good today. I don't care how you feel. Go. The weight's not going to lift itself. The meal's not going to cook itself. Like you have to do it. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Feel like feel good. Do it. Feel like crap. Great. Go do it because yeah. you're going to feel better afterwards, and you're going to thank yourself in six months. So right. I don't. I don't want to. No I don't want to normalize not doing things because you're in a negative mood. Like, right. No, you should do it because you're in a negative mood. I think that's that's how I would say it. that's my last point because if like you're not motivated to do something, great, do it anyway. And that again, exactly. it, it's easy to say. I understand it's easy to say, and we all go through it. But I think if you go into it knowing that 
it's normal to feel like crap. It's yes. normal to be negative. Yes. And it's also normal to still go do it. I think that does help people in their perspective. Okay. Yes. I feel like crap. I'm tired, but so is everyone else. Or it's okay to be tired and go to the gym. It's okay to feel like crap and go to the gym. It's okay to do and eat healthy. Yeah. I think if you normalize that, it will overall increase your chances of success. Oh, a hundred percent. And it's funny when you say that, like when people say, I have to do this, I have to do that, or I, I can't do that. No, no, no. You can do it. And when you say I have to, no, you choose. Everything we do is a choice. So, you know, you choose, you know, to make excuses because you don't want to do this. So if you are tired after work, oh, I'm too tired because I, I can't go to the gym. No, you choose not to go to the gym. It's not that you can't go to the gym. No. You can go to the gym. You know, and just changing those words in your head too, I think can can make a person, you know, reconstruct their their actions. I agree. I mean, I think that's very, very accurate. I think that's I think that's <laughs> perfect. I think it's perfectly said. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you know, so uh, what do you think? Like, do we hit all the steps? I just want to make yeah, sure. all the steps. That's all right, we hit all the steps. We hit all the steps. Okay, so. What do you, what kinds of takeaways would you like the listeners to, you know, emphasize, like, what should we emphasize for the listeners that they really should, you know, for a couple takeaways that really are important? Yeah. So first one is just re rehashing. So basically the four um, you know, ways to help kind of build this resilience. One is creating perspective on the journey itself. Two, building social proof by taking action. Three, developing that self-awareness and that introspection. And four, understanding what getting results actually means and what and how to do it. So those would be four of the main kind of action, you know, takeaways that I have there. Inside those is one, I think, I think there's a great analogy. Just don't wear heels while hiking. Plan, <laughs> number so number one, plan for things to go wrong when you are creating your plan. That's the right. first thing. That's the, mm -hmm. so that's takeaway. Plan for things to go wrong. Number two, just if if things are overwhelming. Just break it down. What is the next step? Just one step that I can take in order to just move the ball, move it forward, just, just slightly, just half a, a quarter of a quarter percent. How do I do that? That's the second one is what's the next smallest action? I'm two, uh, looking into ways to become more self-aware using the mechanisms of journaling, self-reflection, breath work, meditation, they intertwine using one of those things and learning that you can actually control the thoughts if you become aware of them versus staying on autopilot. Right. And number four would be, I'm using one of each basically. And number four is understand that you can still do the work if you feel like crap, that's right. fine. In fact, you should do it when you feel like crap. Number yes. five, actions are the most important thing. I think if all else fails, take action. Yes. I don't care what it is, take action because in, especially in your fitness and health, Action is the number one, the most important thing, because if you do things, things will happen and you're going to get better and more experience over time. Yes, for sure. A hundred percent. I agree totally with you. I think these were, these are great points that you made today. And I think it will help encourage people too, because, you know, on this journey of, of wellness and fitness and people get so discouraged, especially when they try to lose weight or they're bulking up and they're not, they're not where they want to be, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's baby steps. You'll get there in time. Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? You know, you know, kind of different ways to knock out that negativity because when we don't reach our goals that we put in our head, then we start feeling down on ourselves. And then we start negativity starts to make its way into our lives. And those are the things we have to kind of, you know, try to push away using the, the, the tools that you just explained today and really focus on what have we achieved. Like, I like the whiteboard thing. I like how you you made your checks. And I think that's so encouraging. I've, I've known people that put stickies all over their room, you know, and, and, and things like that too. And just like, it's just those visualizations really do help a lot. You know, they really do, they, they really do actually put like a, like they, they boost your, 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 they just give you energy, positive energy yeah. is what they do. They do. Yeah. Totally agree. I love it. You know, I think I think one time I was saying like, you know, to put a sticky on your right before you're going to brush your teeth right in the in front of the mirror and, you know, tell yourself how great you are. You know, just, you know, so as soon as you wake up, you someone you're you got you looking at the reflection of yourself and you have a sticky right next to you saying how great you are, you know, and just starting your day off in a, like a positive note. Yes, I am great. I could do it all, you know, and, and just, you know, and doing your best to do your best, you know, and that's all you can do is try to do your best. And just grow, learn, experience, repeat. 
Grow, exactly. learn, experience, repeat. Just keep I going love that. Over, and over and over again. Yes, definitely. Well, this has been really amazing. Thank you so much, Scott, for coming back today. And I look forward to your next podcast. You know, you 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 do such amazing podcasts. You have such great um, uh, insight, and your your techniques and your tools and your strategies are so effective. I apply them actually to myself, and I, they work really well. So I thank you for just being such a a great you know uh, coach, and and the way you communicate with others is just amazing. So thank you. And do you want to tell everybody your website and you know different services that you provide? So before we go, so they know that what you do yeah sure i mean uh basically scottspeaksfitness.com uh there's coaching and speaking on there i do public speaking events uh corporate conference workshops practical things like that i also do one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, as well to kind of go through a lot of what we're talking about here basically if you're someone who has struggled to achieve a fitness or health goal and you've tried and failed or you don't know how to get started that's what i do you know we get you started we get you moving in the right direction we build those habits that routine so that you can become the master of your own health right we don't i don't want you to work with me forever i want it to be a very short time so that you have the confidence and experience to do it on your own and that's kind of my whole thing um so that's scottspeaksfitness.com uh power of progress is also the podcast on all, all of the you know all the platforms but actually on audible too apparently uh mm -hmm. on audible on spotify on apple on apple podcasts things like that so well, this has been amazing thank you so much scott for coming on the show today i really enjoyed this this was amazing absolutely thank you for having me you have a great day you too